Okay, to thread the top thread, we'll make sure your clutch, the hand wheel, is back into working position. Bring your thread from the spool holder back here. Goes through this first hook. And there are basically two slots here. You go to the one on the right first, go down through, and underneath the, the white thing back, you can put a little bit of tension. That should make sure it catches in the tension adjustment. There's a little clip. You can just slide that into there. Come back down through here. On the arm here, there's a little loop comes up and there's a, a very small little pin. If you take your thread, looks like I get to do this again, through the hook, down through the bottom, under the white part there, back up through metal loop here. There's more technical names for it. Try this again. If you go behind that little arm that's sticking out and pull back towards the front, it ends up in a little loop here on the front. Now then, when you get ready to thread the needle, you make sure you got a good crisp edge on it. And usually, wet it so it's small. In the needle there's actually a groove in the hole. Now this is the needle the grandma had in here. And uh, it's got a really small hole and it's hard for me to see. But anyway, the there's a in the front of the needle here towards you there's a groove and it goes down through the hole. One technique is that you can take the thread and kind of uh, get it in that groove and that'll guide you down to the hole. And you can go with a little luck, you'll get through that. Success. It's last threaded. I'm going There's a lever here on the back, the black one. It's the lever for the pressure foot. Okay. And I put it down and made it a little bit easier for me to get to the hole. And put it back up for a second. I'm going to put the top thread. There's a little groove here in this foot. Put it through there. Now, I'm going to put that pressure foot down for a moment. And by hand, towards me, about everything you want to do where you're moving the machine, most time you want to keep moving the hand wheel forward, top towards you on the hand wheel down here. So I'm going to, by hand, take that needle, let it go down in. And you can't see it there, I'm sure, but it has grabbed the thread on the bottom. We'll put the pressure foot back up. Use a pair of scissors or something if you bring them through. Get a hold of the thread from the bottom bobbin. Pull them to the back. When you're starting off, you want a couple of inches back here to the back 
and if you got a free hand or free finger when the, the your first stitch if you hold that down that will help set the tension on that. So now the bottom bobbin is uh, threaded up and through. We've got the top threaded. Okay. This is the tension setting. And what uh, I found was uh, Grandma had set on one, so I, I set it on two just for starters. And the straight stitches uh, came out great. In fact, from uh, I got out the magnifying glass, straight stitches are just absolutely perfect. And look at them. And this I used two colors. I used a gray and a, a black. I used gray for the top stitch and black for the bottom. If you look, the gray and then there's just a tiny bit of the the loop of the black you can see here. The opposite side is it's just the opposite. You got the black, and with the magnifying glass, you can just barely see the gray loop. So the straight stitches are great. Now it looks like the uh, zigzag stitches need probably about a three tenth, somewhere between two and three, probably, I'm guessing, for zigzag because the uh, top is pulled through just a little bit on the back side or the bottom of the stitch. So if you're going to do some zigzag stitch, which is not a bad idea for a lot of things. Um, it'll need a little bit more tension from that and you would uh, probably use a scrap piece to determine how much. By the way, here's the stitches. There's the line of mark. We got three stitch lengths for straight stitch. Uh, these are a zigzag and an overcast. And these are for uh, darning or applique. When, when, the, when you use these, settings here, the uh, there's a little uh, toothed feed, I think it's called a feed dog down here, that is what goes up and down back and forth, and that's what moves the cloth through while you're sewing. Well, if you put it on one of these settings, it takes that out of action, and then you can move the cloth by hand. And that's the, really the only time you want to move the cloth by hand is if you're doing darning or uh, some kind of applique stitch or something on it. Uh, I, th I think you can also do uh, buttonholes with it, and it, that has something to do with these stitches here on it too. But um, other than that, whenever you're sewing, you let the machine pull the material through. You don't push it or pull on it. Just let it go to speed. And the uh, pedal, the speed pedal on it, is uh, very nice. It's real smooth. It uh, 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 the other sewing machines I got seems like you push down on the pedal and then it kind of takes off and then you got to back off on it to control speed. This one it, it works real smooth. It comes up real slow and starts. Okay. Uh, well, I've got this in this uh, before I show you the sewing on it. I'll Pull this up. See, this little arm here is what puts that pressure foot up and down. Okay, and it's pretty important that it's down when you start sewing. You probably won't have a problem. I a few times have left it up because when I was sewing a uh, on some of the other machines, uh, like real heavy stuff, like the end of a rug, the foot was actually touching before that was even lowered but when it's when this pressure foot isn't down uh, another thing happens you won't see it here and it may not be the same thing you won't see it here but this uh, when you put the pressure foot down it also puts this tensioner on the thread then when you put the pressure foot up it lets the tension off the thread here. So if, if, if you start sewing on something and don't have that down, there won't be any tension here. And you pretty much end up with a ball of thread probably on the bottom side of your sewing. And if you do it a few times, it'll help you start remembering.